Don't let this tiny mosquito perched on your arm fool you. It might seem harmless, just leaving a little mark behind, but it's anything but. This tiny insect might just be the most dangerous creature in the world. You're on the Animal Instinct channel, and today we're taking a look at mosquitoes. To keep these little buzzers away from you, just press this button. Sit back and relax, we're getting started. So mosquitoes. It's unlikely anyone hasn't encountered these insects. They've firmly occupied every continent except Antarctica. The closer to the equator, the more diverse the species of mosquitoes. Just imagine, there are currently about 3,500 species. But mosquito classification is quite tangled, so we won't delve into that. These are small, two-winged insects, usually no larger than 10 millimeters, with a very distinctive structure small wings for their size, long thin legs, complex eyes, and a tubular mouth part. Nothing dangerous, you might think, but they're real masters of their craft, and every detail in a mosquito's body is designed to achieve their predatory goal. Their wings seem small and fragile, but they're actually capable of lifting a mosquito's heavy body into the air. It seems to defy the laws of physics. A mosquito's wings make wave-like movements at a frequency of around 500 to 1,000 beats per second. In this, they outdo both hummingbirds with their hundreds of beats per second and bumblebees with their up to 240 beats. There's a certain similarity to the flight of bumblebees, which is why we hear its buzz even before it arrives. Though in reality, it's just the resonance of the insect's wings. And it's unlikely mosquitoes are happy with this extra way of revealing themselves. These insects see very well, but in their own way. Their compound eyes can distinguish ultraviolet as well as infrared light. However, they only see silhouettes this way. The main picture of the world a mosquito receives is through its antennae. They have many olfactory receptors concentrated on them, which capture various chemical compounds in the air. The smell of lactic acid, carbon dioxide, and heat radiation help hunters orient themselves and find their target. In fact, they fly in an aerial soup of chemicals, seeking out what they need. Therefore, they navigate as well in the dark as they do in the day. For example, a mosquito can smell a human exhale from a distance of 80 feet. To our relief, the vast majority of mosquitoes are actually more interested in animals. Birds, snakes, frogs, fish, and even worms can become targets of the tiny bloodsuckers. Large livestock suffer even more from mosquitoes as they can drain up to 200 milliliters of blood overnight, causing immense discomfort to the animals. Humans only bother about 5% of mosquito species. You probably know that only females are the ones who do this. Male mosquitoes are actually innocent in this matter. They differ from females by their smaller size and completely different proboscis structure. They simply can't drink blood and they don't need to. Male mosquitoes feed on flower nectar. That's right, not many people know this, but they are pollinators and even benefit plants in this way. Basically, the male's task is simply to drink nectar and look for a female for mating. And they have about 14 days to do it all. Males make a slightly different sound when flying, and females can distinguish them. Similarly, they can tell adults from younger ones by their sound and fly out to intercept them. Even if a male is presented with a loudspeaker playing the recorded sound of a female, he will be activated and search for a mate. During this, they need to synchronize their wing beats with a real female in the air before they can mate. Now females need nutrients for egg development, and there's nothing better than blood for that. And since females live for one to two months and lay their eggs in stagnant water, they narrow their prey search radius to two to three kilometers around the water body. Now you understand why there are always so many mosquitoes near water. Having chosen their target and landed, the female begins to act. It seems that she simply pierces the skin with her proboscis, but in reality, it's much more complicated. First, the protective sheath is removed, and now the proboscis is visible. But what if we look at it under a microscope? In fact, a mosquito has not one, but six proboscis, each serving its own purpose. The two outermost ones have serrated edges. These are saws that the mosquito uses to cut through our skin. They are so sharp that we don't even feel the moment of cutting and the mosquito does this with such tiny, barely noticeable jolts. Two other proboscis are designed to spread the hole open in different directions. Then the main needle comes into play. Not only can it bend quite strongly, but it also contains receptors that identify blood. 
and the mosquito knows exactly where it has hit. It easily finds even the smallest blood vessels. Now it's time to pump blood, but first it activates the sixth proboscis, injecting its saliva through it. It consists of about a hundred enzymes, dilutes the blood, and also numbs the bite site. And while pumping blood, the mosquito immediately separates the water from it. With such weight, it wouldn't be able to fly, and every milligram counts. Although some particularly greedy mosquitoes literally explode while filling up, after a mosquito's work, a small inflammation usually remains on the body, which itches. This is due to an allergic reaction that most people have to the components of saliva. Most people, but not all. Imagine not having to itch after insect bites. Do you have this superpower? Write in the comments, it's very interesting to read. After a successful bite, the female provides her offspring with the necessary protein and iron, and soon she is ready to lay eggs. Even a bowl of water will do. Mosquitoes lay eggs in special clips that are attached to the water, and these clips usually contain about 150 eggs. Their perfectionism is enviable. By the way, even if a female doesn't bite anyone, she will still lay eggs, but usually no more than 10. And this action, depending on the mosquito species, is repeated every two to seven days. That's why the insects increase their numbers very quickly. After a while, larvae emerge from the eggs, attach themselves to the surface of the water, and use a siphon to breathe. They create water currents and get their food by simply driving it into their mouths. But they don't live alone there, and in this cruel world, it's very hard for them to survive. Many predators feed on mosquito larvae, including ones like the dragonfly larva and the diving beetle larva. Very dangerous guys. Those who are lucky to survive and get full turn into pupae. And then, after a while, a new mosquito is born. Everything would be fine in this cycle of mosquitoes, but it's with saliva that very dangerous diseases can be transmitted. Every year, 500,000 to 700,000 people die from mosquito bites. By this indicator, insects are among the more dangerous than lions, crocodiles, hippos, snakes, and all other large animals combined. And a far greater number of people survive, but acquire complications that remain for life. For example, in the case of dengue fever alone, caused by mosquitoes of the Aedes genus, because there is also West Nile fever, malaria, encephalitis, and other diseases also transmitted by mosquitoes. And besides the Aedes genus, the most dangerous to humans are the Culex and Anopheles genera. And the malaria mosquito, by the way, belongs to the Anopheles genus. Infection occurs randomly during the injection of saliva. Parasites are transferred along with it, entering the bloodstream. They then begin to penetrate the liver, where they gradually multiply, growing larger and larger. One modified liver cell can create thousands of parasites and the new generation of parasites is already capable of infecting red blood cells and hiding within them from the human immune system. Thus, more and more infected cells end up in the bloodstream, causing fever, seizures, brain damage, and these are just a few symptoms of malaria. But in fairness, it's worth noting that mosquitoes don't get sick with these diseases themselves. They simply become carriers, taking parasites on board from one object and giving them to another. Needless to say, various methods of mosquito control are constantly being developed. For example, various insecticides gained widespread use, especially in the 20th century. But even if we don't consider the damage to the environment, mosquitoes evolve perfectly, adapting to our weapons. For example, they develop and strengthen their exoskeletons, preventing the poison from entering. And after 30, 40 generations, mosquitoes of the same species appear, but resistant to that particular chemical, and we know how quickly mosquitoes reproduce. In addition, mosquitoes are specifically infected with Wolbachia bacteria. In 10 weeks, they cover up to 90% of the mosquito population, and without killing the carriers, they suppress virus reproduction in them. Moreover, the effect of bacteria persists in the mosquito population for up to five years. Another option is the use of genetically modified males. They produce non-viable offspring, but the use of this method requires constant production of a sufficiently large number of prepared males. Let's hope that in this war, the last word will belong to humans. And that's it for today. I hope you learned something new about these small but dangerous insects. If so, don't hesitate to rate the video, write in the comments, maybe I missed something. Subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn on notifications. See you later.